Hi, my name is Luleen, and in this video I'd like to talk about the CapTouch peripheral found on nearly all versions of Renesis' newest microcontroller family, the RA. So, where would you use a CapTouch peripheral or a CapTouch application? Well, just about anywhere where you currently use a mechanical button. Foremost advantages are the ease of use of cleaning and virtually unlimited usable lifespan as CapTouch buttons are not limited to a certain amount of switch cycles. Furthermore, the HMI is made more robust and lower cost with design possible possibilities of uh, which are virtually endless. How does the CapTouch peripheral work? You create a CapTouch button by placing an electrode area on your PCB uh, layout under a non-conductive surface. This area is connected to one of the CapTouch pins of the RA microcontroller and has an inherent capacitance of its own. Simply said, you measure the difference in capacitance when a CapTouch button is touched. The Renesis CapTouch peripheral supports two types of CapTouch, self-capacitance that is simple to implement and only uses one pin of the MCU. And the mutual capacitance type that uses two pins of the MCU and is more robust to water droplets or spray. The entire detection process is realized by a combination of hardware and software processing. As hardware operation, the CapTouch peripheral or CTSU executes the measurement up to a capacitance measurement. After that, the processing result of the CTSU can be processed by software to enable on-off judgment of a switch. The foundation of Renesis CapTouch IP is based on a current to frequency conversion to measure change in capacitance. Shown here is a very simplified model to show the fundamentals of operation. First, a set of pulses are output, which alternate, alternately charge and discharge the connected sensor via switch 1 and 2. This series of pulses is referred to as the sensor drive pulse and operates at a frequency at which ensures full charge and discharge of the sensor by the power supply. Next, as these switches cycle, this results in a draw of current from the power supply. At the same time, the amount of current supplied to perform the discharging of the sensor is mirrored as an input to a current-controlled oscillator. The pulse output of the oscillator is counted for a fixed time, which produces a numerical result defined as counts, as shown in the graphic in the upper right. Finally, when a touch occurs, this requires more current to charge the sensor due to the added capacitance of a finger. This increasing current, which is mirrored to the current controlled oscillator, now causes its frequency to increase. This frequency change causes the number of pulses measured over the same pe fixed period of time to increase. This is how a change in capacitance is measured. Only a minimum of additional com external components are required to support the CapTouch peripheral on the Renesis MCU. Only one series resistance of 560 ohms per CapTouch button, and only one TS cap capacitance of 10 nanofarads that is used as reference for all of the CapTouch buttons. This is much less than in competing designs. The CapTouch peripheral is fully supported under the Flexible Software Package, or FSP, that is the IP core of the Renesis RA family. This supports all of the features of the CTSU, including both self and mutual touch, wheels, buttons, and sliders. It is supported by easy-to-use APIs to open, start, and get data. In fact, this is the same IP as what is being used in both Renesis RX and Synergy and RL78 families since several years, so it has proven its worth. 
To support the software IP in the FSP, Renesis has developed the so-called Quick and Effective, or QE, tool. This is a free of charge plugin for the eSquare Studio development environment that makes it possible to create, tune, and output configurations for buttons, wheels, and sliders in a user-friendly, what you see is what you get fashion. This slide shows a few screenshots of how a button is configured and tuned. Tuning is done automatically, but it is of course possible to manually adapt these values. As previously said, Renesis provides the QE tool for CapTouch as a plugin for eSquare Studio, but it is also available as a standalone version and supports all Renesis CapTouch supporting MCUs ranging from RL78 to Synergy and RX, and of course also the RA series. Here we see a simplified block diagram of the CTSU or Capacitive Touch Sensing Unit, summarizing the functional blocks it is made of. The CTSU peripheral has been implemented in most of the RA microcontrollers. A recent development has been the introduction of the CTSU2 peripheral. This is found on the newest RA derivatives, the RA2E1 and the RAL2L1. The advantages of the CTSU2 over the CTSU1 are that it is even more robust and resistant to severe environmental conditions. Specifically, a new noise cancellation technique to be able to handle synchronous noise improved touch improving touch sensitivity and higher speed scanning. This slide summarizes the differences between the CTSU and the CTSU2. Concerning frequency, with a previous generation measurement, that was at one frequency determined by the QE tool. With the new generation IP, measurement is done at three frequencies, thus avoiding the possibility of encountering synchronous noise if only one frequency was used. A characteristic of capacitance is that it varies or drifts in time due to environmental conditions, for instance, temperature. A feature of the CTSU is that it automatically compensates for these variations in the reference and threshold values to ensure correct operation of the CapTouch event. As already mentioned, CapTouch is a standard feature that is found on nearly all RA devices. Only the parts marked with an X lack this peripheral. In addition, the RA2E1 and RA2L1 are already equipped with the newest CTSU2 version. On this slide, you see how many CapTouch pins are available in the different families and packages. Ranging from four pins in the RA2M2, RA4M2, RA4M2 in 48 pin LQFP package and 48 pin QFN package to 32 pins in the RA2L1 in 100 pin LQFP packages. I will demonstrate the CapTouch peripheral with an evaluation board hosting the RA2A1. The evaluation board of the RA201 is commonly known as the EK RA2A1 and hosts one CapTouch pad. The RA2A1 makes use of the CTSU, or the first version of the CapTouch peripheral. Renesis provides a complete design package of all of its evaluation boards and includes schematics and Gerber files. Example projects are available for all peripherals and are periodically updated and expanded. This is a short video in which I'll demonstrate uh, the CapTouch peripheral based on an uh, EKRA2A1 evaluation board shown down here on the right. Now I've loaded an, uh, a tutorial program into eSquare Studio, which I'll make a little bit larger here. And in this uh, project, for which you'll be getting the tutorials in the downloads associated with this uh, video, um, you can see that I've added the touch driver here and 
configured the tap touch key on the uh, evaluation board which is TS15 and with some uh, a minimal amount of associated code which is also in the tutorial into this project. Now I've already compiled it and I can download it to the target and when I press the key uh, the, the light or the LED next to the key will, uh, will flash. I'll just demonstrate that now. Loading it into the target. And now I'll just show you the board again. And I'll run it. So if I press this key, the LED next to the key will turn on. Magic! You'll also see the uh, button in the expressions window of eSquare Studio go from 0 to 1. This all isn't that very exciting so I'll show you another screen in which we uh, use the quick and easy plug-in. So we'll enable monitoring of the program. And on this screen here you'll see three lines. The uh, blue line down here is a reference value which is the base value of the CapTouch count. The red line is the count value of the capacitance that is being measured on the key. And up here, right at the top corner, the green line is the threshold value. And if the red line exceeds the threshold value, then that's seen as a key press. Now, if I put my finger on the button, you'll see that the count value jumps up to something like 20,000 something and it's seen as a key press. That's also indicated by the red line at the bottom. If I let go, it drops down to the threshold or the uh, reference value right down the bottom and the, the light goes off. So this is this effect in practice. You can also see that I press a button on the configuration the top left. Now I can emulate uh, the drift of the uh, cap touch by pressing my, putting my finger close to the uh, button and you'll slowly see the uh, reference value rise together with the count value. But at the same time, the threshold value, the green line, also rises until I'm right on the target with my finger. But because it wasn't an instantaneous increase in value, it's not seen as a, as a valid key press. So this is an emulation of a drift in the capacitance which could be caused by, um, by moisture, by temperature, or any other uh, effect in practice. Now if I move my finger, the uh, base value goes to uh, its normal base baseline, the count also goes down to the baseline and the threshold goes back to its normal level and of course a key press is once again possible. So once again the tutorial for this is in the associated files of this project, of this uh, video. With the current global COVID-19 pandemic, there is an increasing need for touchless user interfacing. One method implementing this is with proximity detection. This can be done with the Renesis CTSU peripheral. For touchless applications, Renesis has developed two types, gestures sensing and proximity sensing. For gestures, sensing for gestures sensing, Renesis has developed a solution to detect the movement of the hand in 2D or 3D. 
This technology is based on mutual design to topologies and is able to follow and detect gesture of hand up to 20 centimeters, depending on electrode size. For proximity detection, Renesis can support detection of a finger up to 2 centimeters of a button. Thanks to their latest technology improvements on noise immunity and sensitivity, it is possible to measure the small change of capacitance by avoiding cross and effect noise with other buttons. Very useful in many applications like elevators, vending machines, HMI, etc. I will now demonstrate proximity detection with specifically developed RA2E1 sensor solution board. This typical example would be applicable to, for instance, a range hood or an air extraction unit. I'll now, now demonstrate the proximity uh, sensor evaluation board, which Renesis has developed, which is here. Uh, you see a board with rather large uh, cap touch pads uh, with some circuitry on the side, including a air quality sensor and a temperature and humidity sensor. And the values are depicted on this uh, monitor program here. All of the Gerbers and the schematics of this board are freely available on the Renesis website. Now, the idea is to show that uh, with the CTSU, you can also implement proximity. And I will now turn on the board. And when my finger is about two centimeters from the board, you can see that it turns on or off. And if I then press a different button, I can use the high or the low power of, for instance, the range hood, if it's connected to a range hood or some other equipment. Also turn on the auto, turn it off, turn off the speed, low, and turn off the power altogether. All up a very nice little demo. In summary, the Renesis CTSU CapTouch sensing unit can be used for a multitude of user interface applications, ranging from industrial and consumer to medical. The Renesis solution offloads CPU usage by implementing the CapTouch functionality in hardware, unlike many competing solutions. In addition, Renesis provides a very robust solution that is also a able to operate in wet conditions and is resistant to noise to a noisy environment. Implement these CapTouch features in your next application. The presentation is included in the downloads. Finally, Renesis has provided me with four evaluation boards of the RA2A1 used in the demonstration to uh, give to you if you uh, reply to me on this email address with an explanation of what you want to make with your Renesis microcontroller. Looking forward to seeing those emails. In closing, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or recommendations for future videos, don't hesitate to contact me on this address. Thank you for your time.